Let's do one thing. Let me kind of go through the topic and basically see what we already have. And let me send you the study so at least we can come up with what we can do from there. Because so, I think right now. Yeah, so the whole part of the Gita is preaching to Arjuna. Search for that in the book. Eternal Association. Discussing one was basically and, uh, the mark of Jehovah. Discussing the mark of In the beginning, Arjuna was uh, playing the part of the Christian oh, yes. soul. We are, we are Christian soul. Like basically, have you used Mark of Chain models? I have not used. I have not used, but they use a lot of uh, these Mark of models for effectiveness of uh, drugs. Or cost drugs effectiveness. Or any other intervention, basically, to see if this is effective. Um, can you request someone to? Okay, we can build a little more idea. Yeah. Monte Carlo simulation is often unsupervised, right? Monte Carlo simulation. We are conditioned souls. Conditioned soul means that we we identify with this lump of matter, this thing that we walk around with, with a material body. We're not the body. That's uh, Krishna's first instruction to Arjuna when he begins to preach, to talk to him. Our, Krishna's purpose in speaking the Bhagavad Gita was that he wanted Arjuna to do what Krishna wanted him to do. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. And uh, it's like in this world, we owe obedience to father, mother, uh, government, teachers, we are obedient to our boss at work, we are obedient to them. None of, those are, none of those obligations of obedience are absolute. People, um, your father and mother in this life weren't your father and mother in your last life, your teacher you'll have for a, a couple of years, a few years. The government can change at any moment or you can move to another country and be under the government. There. So whatever, or your boss, you'll change jobs different times in this life. So none of those obligations are absolute. But our obligation to God, to Krishna, is absolute. We have to, we're, we're, everyone is in the eternal part and parcel of Krishna. We, we have no, each one of us is a pure spirit soul presently occupying this particular body. The example is that you have a car and you drive that car, but you can get another car or you get out of one car, you drive another car. You can drive a, ride a motorcycle or you can drive a, a, you know, a tandem trailer uh, truck, 40 ton truck, and, but you're the same person whatever kind of vehicle you drive. So we have had many bodies before this one, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, many, many births, both you and I have passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. But there are rare instances when a person remembers a past life sometimes, but it's very rare. And uh, it, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember much about my life in this body from when I was three years old, five, 10, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. and our, our memories uh, are not good at all. Never mind a, a past uh, body. Uh, we don't remember, we forget. But Krishna is the supreme personality of God, and he's omniscient. He never changes his body, his body is eternal transcendental, and Krishna is his body. His body is a purely spiritual body. He never changes his body as we do within this material world. You change from one to another to another. You, have been a, you may have been a, we've all had many bodies. You've been a grasshopper, you've been a, a whale, you've been a demigod, you've been a 
whatever we've had it in many other human forms we've had before. So the body, the body is uh, is just like a vehicle. Lord Krishna gives the example of clothes. So when you're wearing these clothes today, tonight you may wear different clothes, or tomorrow you wear different clothes. Or when your clothes are worn out, you throw them away and get new clothes. So the body is just like that. And the body also includes the, there's the gross material body made of earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And the, the subtle material body is also a, a material body. It's a mind, intelligence, and false ego. Um, so that we have mind, intelligence, and ego in our in the spiritual world also, and we have a spiritual form, spirit, eternal spiritual form, which we have forgotten. We are we're, we're called fallen souls, or people who have rebelled against Krishna and or have desired to leave Krishna uh, because we didn't want to serve Krishna. We wanted to be independent of God. And uh, so when that uh, mentality, uh, take part in that mentality of wanting to be the independent, enjoy independent controller, then we're placed into the material world, into material illusion, where we think that where we are, we think. I mean, we think that we, we don't think, we know wrongly. We know that we are, that we're the body and we think we, we belong in this place. Oh, I belong, this is my place. My world, my flat, my planet, my country, my state, my my town. We think we we think we belong here. We don't belong here. We belong in the spiritual world in Vaikuntha and Krishna Loka with Krishna. But uh, we have left the spiritual world. We've left Krishna out of a sense of uh, rebelliousness, like a child, like a teenager. Oftentimes they rebel against their parents and they get un hungry and they leave. The parents may be very nice and providing everything for them, but they think, I don't want to be under their control anymore. I want to be on my own. I'm leaving. So, of course, it's harder to do these days because finance the situation is so difficult. Mm -hmm. Everything is harder these days. But, uh, but people still do it. They, they think, I don't want to be under your control anymore. I want to get out and see the world. I want to be independent. So that was our position or the reason why we find ourselves in this material world, identifying with this material body. It's an unfortunate situation. It's a very unfortunate situation because any, any body, every particular body that we've had in this material world, without exception, uh, whether one is rich or poor, famous or unknown, whatever powerful or uh, without any power, every situation in this material world is uh, every body that we have is uh, uh, suffering. We suffer, everyone has suffered here, everyone is suffering in various ways, our bodies, whatever disease we have, or break a bone, get old, and ultimately leave the body, it's a very painful condition. So the, the, any, every material body is, uh, is full of uh, suffering. And our minds are always causing us so much distress. If you, one of the features of this age called Kali Yuga, Kali means the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. And that's what we see all around us. We see people quarreling, fighting over nothing, or it may seem like an important thing. Like the Prabhupada gives the example of the, when India was partitioned and uh, the Muslim people, most of the Muslim people, they went 
to Pakistan, which was part of India. And the, the Hindus in Pakistan came to India. And there was so much fighting and killing on the way. There's so much trouble, so much uh, killing. And, uh, and it's still going on today, not only Hindus and uh, Muslims, but black and white, this religion and that religion. So everyone is, and it seems like a good cause to them. But in their next life, the Hindu might be a Muslim, and the Muslim might be a Hindu, and then they'll think the other side. Anyway, these, these uh, it's, the age of, it's the age of quarrels. People fight over nothing these days. Just look at somebody wrong. They think you're looking at them wrong. They say something they don't like. They're ready to fight, even kill. It's such a bad age. So it's the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. And one of the main features, uh, the main feature of uh, disturbance. The main feature in, of disturbance in this period in Kali Yuga is that our minds are always disturbed. Um, and uh, it doesn't have to be like some mental disease like schizophrenia or something like that. But everyone's always worried, oh, where will I get the money? Oh, my car got in, and the engine failed. My mother is sick. And, or, and, I'm worried about so many things. Everyone, everyone is. It's, it's universal. So our minds are always disturbed. So this material world is a place of distress, a place of suffering. The four basic, everyone wants to solve the problems of life. They think, oh, the problem is climate change. The problem is COVID. The problem is racism. Problem is the Democrats, or the problem is the Republicans, or the problem is um, chemicals in the food. So there's so many problems. They think these are not the real problems of life. The real problems of life are birth, death, disease, and old age. And they cure one disease. Polio is a big uh, killer and crippler in the 40s and 50s. Now it's it's practically zero, and because uh, of vaccine. But anyways, the uh, I'm not getting into vaccine. But anyway, the, the disease can be cured. But there'll be uh, there's a hundred thousand other diseases. So birth is a very painful experience. Everyone there's a like romantic notion. Uh, People have some people have these days that, but we were so comfortable in the womb. We had a, a warm, secure place and no worries. But that's not, it wasn't a comfortable place. The womb is described in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam as a very painful situation for nine months. You have to stay there, and it's a very painful situation. And then the process of birth is very painful. And when you come out of the womb and so many things, the babies are always crying. They're crying because they're in pain. And uh, as we, anyway, so birth is a, one of the basic, the four basic uh, sufferings of uh, life in a material body, birth, Old age, of course, I'm, uh, when I came to the temple at 18, now I'm almost 70. Uh, when I was young, 18, I was healthy, strong, do all kinds of things. Now I have so, uh, heart trouble and so many, a lot of trouble. So uh, old birth, uh, old age, disease, and death. Death is, uh, for one, there's another verse in the Bhagavad Gita, which says, for one who has taken his birth, death is certain, and for one who has died, birth is certain, another birth is certain. So death is inevitable, everyone knows. 
Uh, now there's some scientists who are thinking that they can prolong life indefinitely. That's a joke. That, that can never happen. And even if it did happen, what's the use of being like that? A 200, 300 year old man or woman. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so, but it can't happen. So, birth, death, disease, and old age are the four basic Janma, Mritu, Jarab, Yadi, are the four basic uh, sufferings of life. And uh, the, the, it's divided into three other categories. Uh, Misery is caused by our body and our mind, and then uh, misery is caused by other living entities. Other living entities are always giving us trouble. The one example that Prabhupada always uses is mosquito. Nobody likes mosquitoes, but mosquitoes are there. And, uh, and we cause trouble for each other, the human beings. So misery is caused by our body and our mind. Misery is caused by other people. And misery is caused by the demigods, empowered representatives of Krishna for controlling the universal affairs with earthquakes and tornadoes and floods and so many things, natural disasters. And uh, so, the, so anyway, so the, the, no, one, no one in his right mind will deny that this place is a place of suffering. We try to mitigate it or in, in every kind of way. A, a, a plant tends to grow towards the sun. So the human being, the living entity tries to um, avoid whatever is painful. And we try to go towards something that will, it seems nice to us. So we're always trying to avoid the miseries of this life, but they, but they can't be avoided. Anyway, we're not meant for this. The, the point is that we're not meant for this. We're pure, eternal spirit souls, eternal in our loving relationship with, with Krishna. There's uh, many people think, oh God, but God, oh, he's a, he's a tyrant or he's a, or a lot of people think that uh, I don't want to go back. The main objection why people don't take to spirit Krishna conscious life very seriously is that we're still trying to rebel. We, we, it's our original sin. The Christians have the idea of the original sin of Adam and Eve where they rebelled against God, and that ruined it for everyone after. But uh, we don't have that conception, but each one of us has our own original sin of rebelliousness against, against Krishna. So, and we're still in that state of not, of still in a rebellious state to some extent. And uh, those who take to Krishna consciousness, to their spiritual life very seriously, We've recognized that fact and we've accepted that fact and now we want to change. We want to become good sons and daughters of God now, not rebellious anymore. But we still have a lot of that rebelliousness left in us. The Prabhupada says that Krishna has causeless, uh, causeless mercy on the fallen souls. Krishna comes himself in many different avatars, not only Krishna, but uh, many other avatars Krishna comes in. And he, he sends his representatives like Jesus Christ, like Prabhupada, like so many representatives he sends. He sends his books of knowledge, Bhagavad Gita, the Vedic Shastras. He, and he's always trying to urge us in various ways to give up our, our rebellious uh, attitude towards him and surrender to him, surrender to God. Nobody, uh, so, uh, so the, the rebelliousness which brought us here 
can only be, is still our only problem in going back to God. We have to, Krishna has caused this mercy on the fallen souls, the line from Shakespeare, to, the quality of mercy is not strained. You know the whole quote, Christine. So the quality of mercy is not strained, the drama doesn't take away from heaven upon the earth alone. That's what I got. Uh, the quality of Krishna has caused this mercy. He distributes it freely, but uh, but still, but the, but we, the prophet says, we have causeless unwillingness to surrender. Uh, uh, this is a story I tell a lot. I, I was close with a, a family in Kitanagari, it's a Hare Krishna farm in central Pennsylvania where I lived for a long time. And I was very close with a family there from Ghana. And uh, I lived with them for like 10 years. And one day I took the two younger, youngest daughters, the five daughters, I took the two youngest ones to the library. One was five and one was 10. And uh, yeah. So everybody, they were having a nice time at the library, and then it was time to leave. And um, it was just me and them, and an old guy, and their two young kids. And uh, the, the youngest one, they were walking past the library's desk, and oh, she didn't want to leave. And she laid down on the floor, and she I don't want to leave. A little tantrum. And I didn't know what to do, but her older sister was there. And she got her uh, coaxed her and got her. Anyway, what's the what 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 was the point of lying on the floor and saying I don't want to leave? I don't want to leave. There's no reason. It, it's causeless. It's like, I did it when I was a little kid. You you might have done it, and uh, so there, there's no reason why a kid throws a little kid throws a tantrum. But they just do it. They just do it. So, uh, as the conditioned souls, we have that causeless unwillingness to surrender to Krishna. So we have to. We, we, it, 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 our, it's our benefit. Krishna wants us to come back to him, but he doesn't. He never forces us to come back. We have to choose voluntarily to love Krishna again. Love can't be forced. Everyone, everyone knows love can't be forced. So, uh, so Krishna, he, he wants us to come back, out of, you know, into our original loving relationship with him. But he doesn't, he can't force us. Doesn't force us. But he, he makes himself available to us, and he presents himself. This is this I am, I am Krishna. And uh, the name Krishna means all attractive. Uh, all attract. Everyone is attracted to God. It's uh, uh, an example is uh, everyone has done the experiment in school where you have a piece of paper and there's iron filings on top of the paper and you hold a magnet under the paper and all the iron filings line up according to the lines of magnetism. So the iron filing has no choice. You can't say, well, I'm not going to line up. All you other people can line up, but I'm not lining up. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. So Krishna is all attractive. Everyone is attracted to Krishna. But in our illusion, um, rebellious condition in the material world, we, we, so we don't want Krishna. But still, whatever we're attracted to in this material world, boy, uh, boy is attracted to a girl, girl is attracted to a boy, everyone like is attracted to a beautiful sunny day, you know, music, art, we're attracted to so many things, but they're all uh, a reflection or a manifestation of Krishna's attractive potency. Nothing exists, exists. Set except for Krishna and Krishna's energies. So we're all attracted to something. We're attracted to money, we're attracted to power, attracted to beauty, we're attracted to uh, 
different days, different people in the material world. And these things are all a, 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 rep, a representation, a manifestation of Krishna's attractive potency, but presented to us in such a way that we think, well, but I'm not attracted to God. We are attracted to God, but not in his personal form. So we have to attract, we have to accept our attraction to these other things, which are which all prove to be frustrating and uh, uh, sources of pain in, in this world. Nothing, nothing is, uh, remains pleasant, especially when disease and old age and death. Um, and you can't, you might be, it might be a beautiful sunny day, but you can't enjoy it if, you, if your body is giving you so much trouble, your mind is giving you so much trouble. So the uh, so anyway, we're attracted to Krishna, and we just have to uh, recognize the fact that why settle for these pale, dull things, which which cause which ultimately end in pain? Why why be attracted to these temporary, illusory pleasures when I can be attracted to my eternal relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world? Every every country, every religion, everyone has some idea of a wonderful place where there's no suffering. Everyone is always happy. Every no one is fighting with each other. Uh, and there's everyone has some idea of a place like that in every culture. So, but we don't find that anywhere in the, in this world. But we have that. We have those. Uh, Myths or stories, or, and because it, it because we come from there, we come from there in in Krishna Loka, and we can go back there to that wonderful place and live eternally in our spiritual form, and that's the whole purpose of this uh, Krishna consciousness movement is to wake us wake us up to reality. In a dream, you're fast asleep, you're doing this, you're doing that. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're suffering in your dream. But it's a dream. It's temporary. So the, this life is, is also a dream, but it's a, a longer lasting dream. And why settle for this pale, temporary uh, dream where we suffer when we, we don't have to? We can go back home, back to Godhead, and be eternally blissful with Krishna. Uh, so, yeah, so that's the point. And Prabhupada, he came to this, um, to the material world on behalf of Krishna to save us from our ignorance. The only way we're, we're in, we, we don't, we're in ignorance. Like when I was uh, uh, a little kid, I thought that when the leaves on the trees moved, that made the wind. And I was like three years old, I would see the leaves rolling and feel the wind. I thought, well, the leaves moving at the wind. Mm -hmm. And then one day I was riding in the car with my mother past a, a field, and it was a windy day. But there were no trees there, and no leaves, and uh, and I thought, oh, well, guess it's not the leaves that make the wind. Anyway, that we we think so many foolish things in this material world. We think we're the body. We're not the body. That's Krishna's first instruction to Arjuna when he begins pre preaching to him. Uh, for the soul, there's never birth nor death. Or having once been, does he ever cease to be? The soul is eternal, primeval, unborn. The soul is not slain when the body is slain. But, but so and just you take off your clothes, you put on this set of clothes. Krishna explains it in very in various ways to Arjuna that you're not the body. And um, but we're not the body, and this is the foundational. We 
we, we think we belong here. We think we are the body. This is a big mistake. It's a big mistake. It's such a big, it's such a basic mistake that it ruins everything. Because it, it, when, we, when we identify with the body, we think, oh, well, I'm the body, so I need to find my pleasure in, through the body, through the mind, the material mind, the material intelligence. The, the, uh, the physical body. And uh, that will be the source of my pleasure. But, but that is not a fact. It's not a fact. But, and it's such a simple, basic point. It's like the first principle of spiritual understanding. But you could go to uh, um, the biggest, most famous, uh, professor in Harvard Divinity School or School of Philosophy. And you could say, oh, did you know that you're not the body? And he'd say, or she would say, well, scholars have debated that philosophical point for centuries, but uh, we don't take it, but no, but, it, but it, it's, it's a, it, it's not, but you don't know, take it seriously. And you're not the body. It's just a, a, a basic example that Krishna gives in the Bhagavad Gita is just as, just as the embodied soul passes in this life from boyhood to girlhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at the time of death. The self realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. So we're not bewildered when we see a baby grow into a young boy or girl, into a teenager, into a man, a grown up man or lady, into an old body. We're not bewildered by that. We take it as normal. It's what we see all around us. So we don't see the, the soul leaving the body and going into the womb of another mother. We don't see that. But, the, but it's just as much a fact of life as the baby growing up and up and up. It's a, simply a fact of life, a very fundamental fact of life. So we, we start in, in Prabhupada's preaching, he always, and Krishna's preaching, they always start from that point because it's such a crucial understanding. I'm not the body. Well, that pretty much messes everything up that I've ever thought about who I am, where, where I belong, what my purpose is in life. It's like throwing a, you know, it's like throwing a bomb into your mind, just like you know, the expression in the 60s, blowing your mind. But it's the ultimate, uh, it, 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 because it, everything, all our, life is centered around this point that we're the body. We're not the body. Okay, I'm not the body. I'm not the material mind. I'm not the material intelligence. What am I? Uh, and so that's the, the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. The purpose of all the Vedic Shastras is to inform us, first of all, that we're not the body, that this isn't our home, now what do you do? Now that you know that you, you're not the body, you're pure spirit soul, eternal spirit. Eternal means you were never born. You never began your existence. You're eternally existing for, with Krishna, uh, not just for a thousand years or 10 million years, but eternally. And eternally in the, in the future, you never cease to exist as you. Like you, you, a lot of people these days, when I was young, there wasn't in the United States, there was very few people who took the concept of uh, transmigration of the soul seriously. It wasn't, it was known. People knew all reincarnation. Yeah, that's the Hindu thing. But uh, they knew the idea. But uh, nobody, hardly anybody took it seriously here. Yeah, I can tell you that from experience. And 
but but nowadays many 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 people are familiar with the concept and they have some basic um, thought that yes that could maybe that's true or it is true but generally when people think of a common conception about reincarnation is that when I was when when I had when I was somebody else 200 years ago, a thousand years ago, I was somebody else. And if I have a birth after this one, I'll be someone else. You won't be someone else or you weren't someone else. You were always you. I've always been me. And uh, in the future, I'll always be me eternally. You'll always be you. Krishna is always Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And you're always you. The example is that you see a famous actor, they will, uh, hear, they will play one part in one movie and another part in another movie and another part in another movie. You know, it's the same actor playing a different part, it's a completely different role, but it's the same guy or the same girl. It's the same person. So we just play. We change from one body to another. We play different roles, uh, different types of bodies, different country, different planet, different universe. There are millions and millions of material universes. So we, you're always you. You'll always be, you'll always be you. So we have to find out. Okay, I'm an eternal spirit soul. What should, what do I do as an eternal spirit soul? I have to have some activity. I have to do something. And we're active by nature. When you wake up in the morning, you were active in your dreams. When you wake up in the morning, you right away you think, and you might think right away, I wish I could go back to sleep. But you can't. You have to get up. Okay, I'm awake now. What do I got to do? I got to get out of bed. I got to get ready for school. I got to get ready for work. I got to do something. We've got to, we've got to move. We've got to do something. Every, we're, we're active by nature. So if I'm, not, if I'm not involved in material activities centered around the body and my own sense gratification, then what do I do? So the, uh, 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 in Krishna, the, uh, is instructing Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita to do, Krishna wants Arjuna to surrender to him. He wants him to do what Krishna wants him to do, which in that specific case was fight in this uh, battle of Kurukshetra. That's what Krishna wanted. He wanted him to fight. There's a long, long, long story in the Mahabharata behind that. But, um, but the, the bare fact of the matter is that Krishna wanted Arjuna to do what he wanted him to do. And that's the essence of uh, surrender. Uh, what, like if, uh, uh, a child, and your child is, uh, you want your child to do something, but he doesn't want to do it. And, and sometimes they'll say, why should I do it? Uh, I said that when I was a kid. Why should I do what you want me to do? And uh, the parents often say, because I said so. Because I said so. It's as simple as that. They're your supreme authority in the house. And because I said so. So the, the surrender to, and, and the obedient child who's not very rebellious, who loves his father and mother, they'll think, oh, well, okay. My parents, they want me to do this, so I'll do it. And not just do it grudgingly, like my parents, they want me to wash the dishes after dinner. Sometimes I, I did it uh, grudgingly. I, uh, all right, I'll do it, but uh, grudgingly. And uh, so surrender, well, that's, a, that's a type of surrender that you do what you're told. But if you do it grudgingly, it's not a very it's not a very high grade of surrender. But Krishna wants us to do what he wants us to do willingly and happily and out of and ultimately out of love for Krishna. That we whatever Krishna wants, that's that's what I want. 
And um, so that's the essence of spiritual life. That's the essence of surrender to God, is that we, we act on behalf of Krishna, uh, act according to his desires for us. And his desires for us are always the best thing for us. It, 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 when we act in, when we surrender it with that mentality out of love of Krishna, or even if it's not out of love, if we surrender out of an initial sense of just duty, all right, Krishna, Krishna, I'm trying to surrender. I don't feel much love or any love right now, but I know that you're the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and my duty is to surrender to you. So that's a beginning, also a, a primary stage of surrender, which is very good. It's a preliminary, but it's a very big step over being ignoring Krishna or desire, denying his existence. People deny, deny the existence of God. Uh, that I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. But that's, a, that's the most foolish statement that anyone can make. It, it, it's just ridiculous on its face. Like if I said to you, um, uh, do you believe in the sun? The sun and the sky. And you say, no, I don't believe in there's such a thing as the sun. Well, anybody would think, well, that's a crazy thing to say. I don't believe that the sun exists. The sun is the source of all life, everything, all, uh, life on this planet. And if I say I don't believe in the sun, how foolish is that? So it's, it's even more foolish, it's the ultimate foolishness to say I don't believe that God exists. I don't believe that God exists. So nothing, so Krishna exists. Nothing exists except Krishna and his energies. We are also Krishna's energies. And the example is a spark of a fire, a spark coming up, flying up in the sky, in the air out of the fire. It only exists because of the fire. Uh, and this, uh, so uh, we, are, we, of course, it's not a perfect analogy. Because we're not, you know, we're not the, the spark of the fire isn't the person, but the, but the analogy is true that we were a tiny spark of the fire of Krishna. Krishna is the source of our existence. He's the source of all energy. But Krishna's energies are are all persons. You're a person. You're a person. You're a person. I'm a person. How am I a person? I didn't make myself. My mother and father didn't make me. They made my body, but they didn't make me. I didn't make myself. I didn't make you. How are we here? Where did we come from? How do we even exist? We exist because Krishna exists, because God exists, and we're eternally uh, part and parcel of Krishna. Spark, a personal spark of Krishna. And uh, yeah. So our, our duty, and ultimately our willing uh, surrender position out of love of God, is to surrender to Krishna. What does Krishna want? That's what I want. And what does Krishna want me to do? That's what I want to do. And without no hesitation, no rebelliousness that Krishna wants us. And that was Arjuna's conclusion. And Krishna ultimately said in the Bhagavad Gita, he said, now, now I've told you everything, now do as you like. Because Arjuna could have cho chosen, even after uh, the whole Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna speaking to him, he could have said, no, well, I still, no, I don't like this fight, not going to do it. And which is what he said in the beginning, before Krishna spoke to him. He could have said that. He's, if he has his uh, free will, he could have chosen that. But he didn't. He said, now I've heard, I, I understand what you're saying. Now I will do as you want. I will do as you want me to do. Willingly. And uh, 
Arjuna, actually, just one more point, and then if there's any questions or comments. But one more point is that um, Arjuna, he's the eternal associate of Krishna. He wasn't actually, he was playing the part of a conditioned soul, uh, not wanting to do what Krishna wanted. And, but he was only playing the part because Krishna it speaks to his pure devotee. He instructs us through Arjuna, but Arjuna was only playing that part of being the illusion and rebelling against Krishna. So we don't, um, yeah, so we, we, we want to be like Arjuna and surrender your heart and soul. The Bible says here, first thing is love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. That's surrender to Krishna. So any questions or comments? If there aren't, I can talk to you if you want me. So we're going to chant and have kirtan. The curtains are going to open and we're going to have kirtan in the cross. All right. Well, uh, getting back to Shiva Prabhupada, Prabhupada was in the spiritual world, in Krishna Loka, with Krishna as his eternal servant. And he didn't come to this world out of rebelliousness, but uh, Jesus Christ, he, uh, so many saints and sages, sons of God, sir, pure devotees of God, Krishna, have come and always come to this place for the sole purpose of uh, enlightening us in, as to our original, true, eternal nature and helping us to go back to Godhead. So Prabhupada, he, he came here just to help us go back to Godhead. And the only point is to make us happy. We're, we're not happy in the material world. When you're, if you're young and healthy and you have enough money and you have things kind of together, you might sometimes people say, well, I'm happy. And, uh, but nobody can be actually happy. What we call happiness in the material world is not, uh, is not happiness. Real happiness, we have a little tiny, tiny little taste of happiness in this material world, but it's compared to a drop of water in the desert. If you're in the desert without a canteen, and a bottle of water and just wandering around and somebody comes up to you and says, uh, uh, like the old cowboy movies, the guy's crawling in the desert, he goes, water, water, and the sun's beating down. And if, if somebody comes up to him and says, well, here's a drop of water, hold out your hand, here's one drop of water. What good will it do? It can't quench his thirst, it can't cool him from the heat of the sun. So that, that's compared to the happiness in the material world is compared to that. We have a little bit of idea of what happiness is here. Therefore, we can understand when somebody says that it is a source of infinite, eternal, transcendental bliss, which is, is so much greater than anything we've ever experienced with this material body or this material mind. It's so wonderful and so uh, eternal that, that we can understand when somebody says that such a place exists and we think, well, that sounds good. I, I have an idea of what happiness is. I'd like to be eternally blissful and full of knowledge in the spiritual world with God, uh, associating face-to-face -face at every moment. So we want to be happy and we can be happy. It's available, that's the point. It's readily available. All we have to do is take it. The, the, the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, is the uh, Yuga Dharma, the Yuga Dharma for the age of Kali, is to chant the holy names of the Lord. And by chanting the names of Krishna, Krishna is, you're with Krishna personally, 
because Krishna and his name are non-different. Krishna is his name. If, I, if I'm outside and I call your name, well, you don't know I'm calling you. You're still in here, I'm still out there. You don't know. But, but when you call Krishna, because you're different from your name. But when I call <coughs> Krishna's name by chanting Hare Krishna, uh, Krishna is present in his name and you're associating directly with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When you, uh, whoever you associate with them, like if you associate with criminals or low, 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 um, low life people, you'll develop those kind of qualities. If you associate with, with the you know, American expression is, if you lie down with dogs, you'll get up with fleas. So whoever we associate with in this material world will take on those qualities. So if we associate, associate coming to the temple and chanting Hare Krishna and uh, listening about Krishna, that you're associating directly with Krishna. It, it, uh, directly with Krishna. He is his name. He is his temple. He is present in all the devotees. And, uh, so we uh, we're associating directly with Krishna. And by doing that, you become godly. You become Krishna eyes. Probably use that expression. You become Krishna eyes. You don't stop being you. You don't become Krishna. You don't become God. But you become uh, remember your eternal position as a servant. Okay, so it's time for Kirtan and. Uh,
Ya As you all of know, today is Halloween, so there are uh, lots of uh, people and families trick or treating. So uh, we are thinking of going for an impromptu harina. So please feel free to join. You can grab a box of prasadam from there, and then we all can leave. Okay, Hare Krishna. Oh. Yes. 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 Oh.